Hey all, this is Steven Roselle, Senior Technical Specialist, my guy at Autodesk, and this is the fourth installment of a Arnold Maya demo series uh, that just covers kind of a broad range of topics around the Arnold integration in Maya. And the third, we covered kind of an intro to the render view, and this is an extension or continuation from that initial render view demo. So if you haven't seen that, go back and maybe check that out, and then we'll pick up here. So let's talk about some of the more advanced settings. I'll just get a better angle here. Again, we're not worried about quality right now, just for the sake of the demo. I just want it to render uh, fairly quickly. Um, but you'll notice as this progressively kind of renders, uh, I'm rendering out the beauty pass. So I'm seeing kind of the high quality. And actually, let's set that as one-to-one -one just so I can see the full resolution. Um, so what I can see here is that I'm just seeing the beauty pass. Now, while that's rendering, if I have render passes set up in my scene, or in Arnold they're called AOVs, which is an acronym for arbitrary output variable. It's a way of basically uh, separating out different lighting effects into passes essentially. And I'm going to cover that in a little bit more detail in another demo. But what you can see here is I've created some passes basically, or some AOVs, and I can now switch. And as that's rendering, I can switch between these. So I've got my, my transmission, which is transparency. I've got my specular, uh, which is separated out from indirect. So you can see indirect has to do with the, the bounce light. That's why we're seeing it kind of on the low part of the car. We we'll only see it in certain sections and on the ground. Uh, I've got the diffuse, which is just going to be basically color without any specular or without any, any reflected or bounced light. Uh, I've got a shadow pass. This is basically going to give me a, a, a shadow pass that I can use to comp, uh, you know, or color correct or, or you know, in, increase or decrease the intensity of a shadow and comp. Uh, and then I can do something like a Z pass, which is basically a depth pass. Now, I don't see this by default. I have to bump down my exposure, and I always have to find the value in here. But if you bump down the exposure, uh, you can actually see that uh, shadow or that, that depth pass, uh, the Z pass, a little more clearly. So I might want to put that at like negative, whatever, 13. Now, the cool thing about this is this is all still tied to the interactive renderer. So I can still go in and I can manipulate my scene. And I can see the effect of that on the depth pass. So if I move an object around, or in the case of, let's say, I want to look at the indirect light. So I just realized I forgot to reset my uh, exposure here. There we go. So now I'm back to the beauty pass. So but what I was saying is you can set this to be indirect. And now I can manipulate my scene. And I can see the uh, effect only for that particular pass, or that particular AOV. So if I were to go in and, and change something like my my lighting values, um, I can go in and, and actually see like how those lighting changes affect. And let's say I want to change the color temperature. So you can see that that's, that bounce light is becoming more yellow as I change the color temperature of the light. And you can see how it affects just that particular indirect pass. Or if I wanted to see it on the specular, see exactly how it looks on the specular. And then it's still rendering the beauty uh, at the same time. So it's rendering all those passes. So at any rate, the render view is a really handy way of seeing all that stuff. Let me undo those weird changes that I just made, because those don't look very good. Let's get back to where we were. So I'll talk more about creating AOVs and the different types of AOVs that you can create uh, in a different demo. But I want to talk about a couple of other things. In the Advanced tab over here, uh, or it's actually the Display tab. I call it the Advanced tab. But uh, here is another hook into things like the gamma, uh, but also, whoops, also things like the view transform that you're using. So Arnold makes complete use of your color management, your color space management. So your view transforms can be set in this tab. So if I want to see my image in kind of raw form without any view transform or any color correction, I can switch that there. And I can also switch the same thing here. So it's the same setting that you have in your viewport. If I want to see this as Rec. 709 in my render view and Rec. 709 in my viewport, I can see those in tandem that way. You can also do color correction. So if you have a lookup table, a LUT, uh, that you've created on the compositing end, you can actually load that. I've got one called a blue tone here, which is going to add this kind of blue tone map uh, to my scene. So I can do the same thing here. I can add a blue tone map to my 3D view, my viewport, and I can see that in my render view as well. So I think I have another example in here that's a sepia tone. So I can set my render to render with a, a sepia tone kind of color correction uh, tone map, which is pretty cool. And you couldn't do that before because Arnold wasn't really taking advantage of the color space management in the way that it is now. On the advanced side, 
you can go into the pixel level and you can calculate uh, pixel information based on where your cursor is. So as you can see, if I kind of pull in here a little bit, if I hover over this hot spot in the specular highlight, I can actually see the pixel information. Uh, let me actually turn that sepia tone off. I'll just set it back to the default, which is sRGB, just for clarity here. And I'll go into the pixel information. But again, now you can see the pixel information based on the path specifically. So you can see what the diffuse color is, which is right here. Uh, you can see what the, the overall combined beauty path is. You can see the Z, you can see the indirect. So all the equivalent passes that I have here. So if I'm looking at specular, for instance, you can see uh, what the specular looks like. Um, and, and it gives you all the pixel information that you might need. And then you can, you know, potentially use that on the compositing end. So anyway, this is a way of getting down to the granular, granular level. You can find the luminance, you can find the uh, uh, HSV values, uh, RGBA val values, and so on at a per pixel level. And then you can set a spread in here so you can actually have it average based on a range of pixels. So by default, it's one pixel, but you can set that to average up to like three or four pixels or something like that. And it'll give you an average based on where your cursor is. So you can get lots of diagnostics kind of information from this. You can also get diagnostics information down here. So if you look uh, down below, this will tell you the resolution that you're rendering at. It'll tell you the size of your image relative to your current resolution. So if I set that to one by one, uh, that will show me that it's the one to one, the actual resolution. If I kind of zoom in here, uh, actually, let me turn off my 3D manipulation. Uh, if I kind of zoom in, you can see that'll show you I'm seeing 140% of the image size or I'm seeing 70% of the image size. It shows you the camera. And then this is actually your quality settings. So this shows you the samples uh, and it's based on the order that you see in the quality settings. So the standard uh, and aliasing values, the, the diffuse and the, the uh, transmission and all that stuff, all those quality settings that you would set show up here. And again, we're going to get more into quality settings later. Okay, so there's just a couple more things that I want to talk about. Let's pull the camera back here a little bit. And actually, I'm going to set my render region uh, so I can get a better kind of relationship between my viewport and what I'm seeing in the render view. Uh, let's get the full car in frame, and we'll just kind of let this uh, progressively refine. And we'll talk a little bit about uh, saving and loading images. So in the render view, uh, if you go to File, you can save an image, uh, which would allow you to save just st standard file formats, you know, like a TIFF or a JPEG or whatever it may be. Uh, but you can also save a multi-layer EXR, which would store all of the various render passes in the same single encapsulated file. So as an example, I'm actually going to pause and just let this refine. All right, so that's good enough. Like I said, I've got the, the, the uh, quality settings kind of throttled down. But let's just show as an example, I can save this out to a multi-layer EXR. And I'm just going to throw this on the desktop. And we'll just call this uh, my car just for kicks. And I'll save that out. And that's going to save out a file called my car EXR. And I'll open that up with RV. So RV is the image sequence viewer, movie viewer uh, that's part of Shotgun. But what you can see here is if I click on this little button in the lower left, that will bring up a list of all the things that I've got loaded into RV. And here under sources, I've got the image my car, which is an EXR file. And if I open that up, I can actually go in and I can isolate the different components of the EXR. So I can go in here and look at just the transmission. I can look at just the specular. I can look at just the shadow mat, the indirect, diffuse, and the Z channel and all that stuff uh, that I rendered out um, from Arnold. So this export to EXR is a, is a nice way of just encapsulating everything to a, a single file, basically, so you don't have to juggle a bunch of separate images for all of your different passes. And then finally, uh, you can, of course, save out the images directly like that. But you can also go into the snapshot section. And the snapshot section allows you to take snapshots in your scene. Uh, it stores them as files, but it, it kind of gives you a higher level uh, UI for loading them into your scene. You can then basically go in and start to make changes and then do kind of compare and contrast. So for instance, let's uh, go in and grab the car and let's just do something really obvious. Let's go in and just change the, the color of the car and make this uh, kind of a, a dark greenish car or whatever. It doesn't really matter. Uh, and then that will start to render. But then what I can do is I can kind of start to compare and contrast the two. So now I've got a snapshot that I saved and then I've got the current render. 
And then you can also go in here and you can do kind of fades. If you right click on this, you can do a set A and set B in order to compare and contrast. So if I set that to A, what that will do is it will give me a slider and this slider allows me to just do a wipe. So the image on the left is the saved snapshot. The image on the right is the one that's actually currently rendering. And then I can start to go in and, and compare these. So let's say, you know, obviously I don't want a green, but maybe I want a red, but just a slightly different tint of red. Maybe I want to bias that a little bit towards kind of the, you know, the, the cooler version of the red. Now I can go in and just do a wipe and just kind of compare those two while it's actually rendering. So we'll let that to refine a little bit more. Let's say that's good enough. And then I can come in here and I can just add another image. I have to turn off the comp. There's an A-B button here that will switch over into the snapshot mode. So now I can do another snapshot. And now I can actually compare the snapshots. So now this is no longer the live scene. This is snapshot one, snapshot two. And then this is the live scene. So just to show you that comparison, let's go in and create a beautiful yellow car. And now I've got snapshot one, snapshot two, and then turn that off and I've got my live scene. And I can do A over B compositing with, with any of these. So that should give you a pretty good idea of the kinds of things that you can do with the Arnold Render View. It has come a long way since the initial introduction of Arnold into Maya. We've added a lot of features along the way, things like the ability to support uh, AOVs and things like the ability to support color management. Uh, the ability to do things like uh, you know color analysis and 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 getting kind of down to the granular granular level, comparing images and and whatnot, saving out the EXR. All this stuff has been added over the last year. So uh, there's a lot of bells and whistles in there, and a lot of cool features, and a lot of this just kind of allows you to iterate really really quickly as well, which is uh, which is always nice. All right, thanks for your time. Bye.